Today's Debunking the Myth deals with obesity. The myth is that genetics causes the disease, but Joe is here to debunk that myth. Well, and that surely, was a surprise to me, Joe. I thought, I thought for sure that it was genetic. We, we believe it's a myth um, in this sense. You could have a grandmother and, a, and, a, and her daughter and a grandchild all be heavy. And then you could conclude empirically by observation that um, it must be genetics. Mm -hmm. We, our position at Kylea is this. Grandma ate wrong for her uh, metabolic type. She passed that improper eating habit on to her daughter, who then mm. passed it on to her daughter, in this sense. We're going to talk awesome. more about this uh, when Amy comes on here. Um, we believe that everybody is either a protein type, which means their, their diet should be predominantly protein or a, a higher percentage of protein. We'll get into details later. Yeah. Or a mixed type, where they can do kind of both equally. Or a carb type, where they do better with carbs. So if grandma is a protein type, and she's supposed to have a predominantly protein and then a certain percentage of fat and then, and then carbs and diet. And she's doing the opposite. Her diet's loaded with carbs. And so she brings that, and so she has a weight issue. So then she brings that, and that weight issue is because she's producing too much insulin and it's being stored as fat because of the excess carbohydrates. So then she introduces those same eating habits to her daughter. And then her daughter has that weight problem. So oh. is the genetics... Is it genetics in the sense of a DNA scenario, or is it genetics in the sense of passed on bad habits? And yeah, environment, and, and you know, metabolic typing aside for just a moment, I, th I think that some, some families just buy the wrong type of foods. I mean, the mom and dad eat plenty of junk food and stuff, and so what, what are the kids gonna eat? They're gonna eat the same kind of foods, regardless of what their type is. It's just bad eating habits, don't you think? I, I, it is, the same kind of foods, and you do pass those habits on. Um, one of the things that we'll get into here uh, in just a minute is, um, the whole thing about, well, my grandfather ate this way, mm. and it worked for him, but it doesn't work for me. I mean, that would certainly dispel the genetic uh, part of it, um, but in, in addition to that, it shows us that we can, we can make, if, if, if it is a gene, let's just say we had a scientist on it says, no, we have information that says it is a gene. I still believe that if, if there was a gene involved, what we're saying, the myth is that, that that means that it can't be changed. It can it be can. changed. It's, it's calories in, calories out, exactly. and exercise and all the rest, exactly. it, as well as the, the MT, which we're going to be talking about. Well, Shirley, we always take uh, questions and emails from viewers. We have an email from Mary Beth in Illinois, and she writes, there's been so much negative press about products like ibuprofen, Aleve, and Celebrex. How much can you take safely for pain, and are there certain people who cannot take it at all? Well, let's direct that question to our resident medical doctor, Dr. Walt Laramore. Good question. It is a good question. Well, you're right. There has been a bunch of negative press about these medications called NSAIDs. They're non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and the most common ones are the over-the-counter uh, over products like Aleve and, and Advil or Motrin. Well, for people who have cardiovascular disease or high blood pressure or kidney disease, or for people who have very sensitive stomachs or bleeding stomachs or ulcers of the stomach, these medications can be potentially harmful and should not be taken without a doctor's advice and guidance. But for most people, taking these products as directed on an infrequent basis is safe and effective. Well, that was, uh, that was, that's good information because you do hear a lot of, of bad press about this and people have died of strokes and people have died of heart attacks and I know they're not good for you. I actually asked this also to my daughter-in-law, uh, Emily, who's a doctor, because I was concerned every once in a while I'll take, you know, an Advil, ibuprofen, not, not often. I try to avoid it if I can. But what she said, the same thing. If you don't have a heart problem, if you don't have high blood pressure and stuff, then it's probably safe to occasionally do it. What do you think about well, that? Well, occasionally it is. I, I mean, a balance is always a question. But there are a lot of people out there who take things like ibuprofen as an anti-inflammatory because it is technically an NSAID. Right. Um, but here's the misnomer. It's an anti-inflammatory in a sense where if you have a headache that's caused some, some dilation in the blood vessels in your skull region, that will help reduce that dilation and, and relieve the pain. Mm -hmm. If you have swelling in a joint or in tissue, for something like ibuprofen to be a true anti-inflammatory, you have to take gobs of it. Oh, unfortunately, really? some people do. And, and you know, some people are prescribed gobs of it for arthritis and things like that, unfortunately. And you may not have a choice. But again, it's the type of thing, like Dr. Limmer said, that's where you need a, you know, the advice of a physician in that case. But people who are taking it on a daily basis, you know, 12, 16, 1800 milligrams on a daily basis, and not being monitored, that's a mistake, Shirley. Yeah, that's I That's something we'd want and, to inform people. And we people. should you avoid to, it we if should. we can, absolutely. Well, you know, we've gotten several emails recently asking about back pain and other chiropractic issues. Let's go now to Dr. Walt Larimore for today's Your Family's Health segment. This is going to be interesting. Many modern-day chiropractors say that alignment of the spine assures good health. 
Misalignments, which they call subluxations, are thought to be displaced vertebrae that disrupt the flow of nerve impulses through the spine, causing pain and illness. But the actual existence of subluxations remains disputed, even by some chiropractors. Chiropractors generally use x-rays and their touch to determine whether manipulation is needed. One form of manipulation is done quickly using hand thrusts, while another type uses slower movements. Some stick to methods that have shown clear benefits and are supported by clinical studies, while others falsely claim to cure just about any disease. Still others want to function as a primary care physician. Chiropractic can be a legitimate treatment for some musculoskeletal problems, but use caution when choosing a chiropractor. Get references from friends and medical professionals that you trust. I'm Dr. Walt Laramore. That was good, and um, and you know we actually had Dr. Terry Smith on here, which was uh, well, I don't is he is he referred to as a doctor? Yes, because he's right. a doctor of chiropractic and a holistic uh, a person, so very good source. And I would actually like to see him. But you know, chiropractics, uh, as as Dr. Walt said, they they're very good for some things. But I would be cautious if you go to one that says he can cure everything. You know, because well, yeah. that's just not true. I love his advice, Shirley. If you know, they're not PCPs, they're not primary care providers, and right. a lot of them are doing blood work, and if they're doing it for different reasons, you know, for instance, let's say that they want to put you on a exercise and diet program, that's one thing. Yeah. But if they're doing it in a diagnostic sense, which unfortunately some of them are out there doing it, that's not what they are. And here's the tip off, I, I, I want to just expound on what he said, I'm so glad we have someone like Dr. Laramore as a resident MD right. to bring common sense into all this. If you go into somebody's, and remember, they just got educated for seven years, They've got six figures plus invested in their education. Many of them still owe that whole amount when they're yeah, practicing. Exactly. This is the reality of That's this true. thing, right? If you walk into that office and he or she, uh, and I have seen this firsthand, and I've seen it from the tens of thousands of people that uh, work with Kylea, if their answer for all health issues is subluxation, which Dr. Laramore referred to, or the fact that you know, alignment of your bones, of your vertebrae, uh, the relationship of bones and muscle, of all the answers for health or all the answers for sickness, whichever way you want to say it, mm -hmm. uh, lie in solving that problem, then it's, it's, time, to, it's time to find another yeah. physician. Um, they're wonderful for pain. Chiropractors are wonderful for back especially pain, shoulder back pain, pain, yes, yeah. especially lower back pain. Um, and and even, even joint pain, because sometimes the pain can be showing up in one area but coming from an entirely different area, I do believe sure. in meridians of energy throughout the body, and I do believe that blockages of those meridians do stop the norm, normal healing process. Acupuncture and chiropractic can open up those meridians for healing. But again, if you have visited, a, here's another tip off. If a chiropractor looks at you and says he needs to see you three or four times a week for six weeks in a row, that technique can't be a very good one. Okay? And if you have a serious problem, like Greg, my son-in-law, has a bulging disc right now. He had to go a few days in a row first. Now he's, he was going every other day, and he's getting better. But yeah, they, some of them are in it for the money. And you know, it's kind of discouraging to me to think that in order to feel good, I would have to go to a doctor three or four times a week forever. I mean, you know, I'm just not exactly. going to do that. And Greg's situation is extreme. You know, that he's in extreme. tremendous pain. He's trying this as a resort, uh, last resort before surgery, and it right. may work for him. I think that's a different story. It is. It We're is always different. talking about the, the masses here and, and, and the normal thing. Extremes are always, you know, call, radical things call for radical choices. That's so. true. Well, listen, if you would like a copy of the show, call 888-242-9393. Now, coming up, Amy Andrews, a holistic life coach, is here to answer some questions on metabolic typing and how it can drastically improve the quality of your life. Hold that remote. Stay tuned.